10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition. And liftoff. Liftoff of Falcon Heavy with Europa Clipper. Unveiling the mysteries of an enormous ocean lurking beneath the icy crust of Jupiter's moon, Europa. Engine chamber pressures are nominal. You see that the chamber pressures are nominal as we hear. All 27 Berlin engines look great. Rocket beginning to roll. Putting down 5.1 million pounds of thrust. Coming up, they're going to back off those engines just a bit. Head into max, max power and telemetry nominal. We hear the power and telemetry on the vehicle are good there. Everything's looking uh, really Falcon well. Falcon Heavy is supersonic. They have uh, reduced power in the center core uh, to get through maximum max Q, maximum dynamic pressure on the launch vehicle as we approach that. The two side boosters at full throttle. A beautiful shot there is our camera team. Max Q. Locking into the rocket on a clear blue sky. The view from the booster cam back down on Earth. We are watching NASA's launch of the Europa Clipper, a spacecraft destined for a moon off of Jupiter. I want to bring in retired astronaut Chris Hadfield for a much better description of what's happening than I can provide right now, Chris. But overall, looking like a successful launch so far. Uh, what do you think watching this? Well, uh, I'm just amazed at the quality of the hardware that SpaceX builds. I mean, just yesterday, they they, they launched a revolutionary new rocket and grabbed uh, this enormous booster. And here we are the very next day with three of their boosters uh, taking a probe all the way out to, to the largest planet in the solar system. And so far, uh, touch wood, everything's gone perfectly. It took everything those first three boosters had to get it high enough and fast enough, They're optimizing everything to be able to use as little time as possible to send this, this probe uh, across the solar system all the way to Jupiter. But so far, uh, everything's looking perfect. Uh, amazing numbers, you know, like it could have lifted five million pounds off the ground, you know, it's, it's hard to even think of that. And then it, it just, forces its way up through the atmosphere like this enormous beast going through the speed of sound in just you know 45 or 50 seconds going straight up incredible nobody was on board but i i've flown three rocket ships and the vibration is is so um enormously powerful around you you really know you're in the jaws of something but it's trying to be very careful with that that satellite mounted on the nose and now that the uh, the two side boosters did their job and then they fell away, and then the middle booster, it ran, used up all its fuel, it's done its job, and it's fallen away. Now we're just on that one remaining internal engine that is steering so carefully and giving all the necessary speed. Because when it's done, it's going to pop off the, the payload. And then it's like a, a five and a half year coast just just with little tiny thrusters from then on getting all the way from here to where it's going to be caught by Jupiter's gravity and end up in, in orbit around Jupiter. Just an amazing what we can do. And this is the first 10 minutes of it. And Chris, we talked before the launch about how narrow this launch window was. They had 15 seconds in order to either make this launch happen or not. Why is that timing so critical. Talk me through this slingshot effect that they're aiming for. Yeah, you know, it's not like often on my some of my missions, they had a launch window. This is like a launch moment, you know, and, and it's because um, imagine if you were standing on a ride that was spinning, uh, you want to jump off at just the right moment to get the speed of that ride going exactly the direction you want to go. And the world's a pretty good ride, you know, and, and that's what the rocket just launched from. So it's got all the speed of rotation of the Earth that it then uses uh, rather than having to just carry fuel. But now, once this, you can see that orange glowing super hot engine that is doing all the final uh, acceleration. 
But once that engine shuts off, and now this thing's going incredibly fast, heading out into the solar system, um, the most efficient way to get there is to uh, arc around a couple of the planets. In fact, it's gonna arc around Mars and it's gonna uh, arc back around the Earth. And I don't know uh, if you're gonna do any ice skating this winter, Diane, but you know how if someone else holds your hand, you can skate into somebody and then just by them holding their hand and slingshotting you around, you can come out the other way faster just by that, that uh, sort of assist you get spinning around somebody else on the ice. That's what the planets will do for it. It'll steal a little bit of energy, tiny bit from Mars and a little bit from the Earth, sort of like a, a crack the whip or slingshot maneuver. And that'll help it steer, but also help it get all the energy it needs here on its five and a half year voyage until eventually the massive gravity of Jupiter will capture it. And then it'll do a careful series of maneuvers using Jupiter's gravity to slow down so that it can get closer and closer to the surface of its target there at Europa. And, and we're gonna get closer to that moon than we've ever seen before. We're gonna discover stuff that, you know, we can only imagine up until now. And, uh, and I'm really excited that this part has gone properly because it's the first step of thousands on, on an unprecedented voyage of discovery for humanity.